This playthrough is rated M for Mature. Greetings and salutations, viewers. Welcome back here with another episode of Fable 2. In the last episode, we grew up, and boy, how did we grow up. But, uh, you know, now that we've grown up, now we've got a mission before us. Uh, Teresa, or whatever her name was, has told us we need to uh, go to the tomb of a hero to, uh, I guess, figure out how to get our revenge or, or save the world from... I guess not save the world. Although it's an RPG, it will probably save the world in some way or fashion with against Lucian who killed our sister. So uh, let's see what the heroes can teach us. Oh, what's this? Ooh, a silver key. Yep, like the first game, you can collect silver keys to unlock uh, to unlock potions. No, uh, to unlock chests. So we'll have to try to find those. These rare silver keys can be used to open magically locked chests found all over the world. Each chest requires a certain number of keys to open, so always be on the lookout for more. You never know what you'll find inside a silver chest. Yeah, usually you'll find, like, well, depending on the chest, but usually the more expensive chests you'll get, like, you know, unique weapons, armor, and stuff like that, so... Or outfits, if you're into that thing. So let's uh, go inside the hero's tomb and see what the heroes of old have to show us. Even the music's being all in, being all ominous, or I don't know if ominous is the word. You know, like oh, this will explain here in a second, like what where we are in the current time frame of the world of of Albion. I, I, for a second, I almost forgot what the name of the world was. I was like, Wait, don't it? be alarmed. I'm speaking to you through the guild seal. You will need to jump into that hole to continue. Don't worry, the water at the bottom will break your fall. Yeah, you don't have to do it, lady. I do. Geronimo! Whee! Hey, wait, what about the dog? Are you coming, buddy? Oh. Uh, oh. What the? F what the? Uh, well, you know. Xbox One. Well, actually, no, the, the, no this is. Yeah, Xbox 360 graphics. So. Oh, I wonder why that's uh, floating down like that. Yeah, probably nothing we can do about it, but. Yeah, the dog just kind of almost belly flopped onto the ground. I was surprised he didn't break his neck or something like that. Uh, good boy, I guess? Anyway. Actually, I forgot if there's anything else. I don't think there was anything else in here, at least at the moment. No. All right, let's follow the uh, the, the the pointy trail of not failing and uh, see where we go to next. Hmm? I thought I saw something. Ah, beetles. Okay. <laughs> Use a sword, my ass. Ha! I didn't even have to touch him. Yeah, if it glows, oh uh, yeah. The game's basically explaining if it glows red, just like in the previous game, you can attack him. If you uh, press the right analog stick, you can shift between enemies. And then the color of the orb indicates what your experience level is, just in the previous game. Blue for skill, strength, green orbs yellow for skill, and, and red for magic. The creatures that you kill. Yeah, make sure, yeah, our right trigger to collect all the orbs. Because um, you can't, uh, I think if you don't do that, I think you do miss it. Like if you kill them and then just run off, you know, so you have to gather them at some point. But yeah, beetles, come on game. I'm not... You know, I'm a I'm a trained adventurer. You know, uh, ooh, hello. Yeah, like in the previous game where he finds dog spots, he also finds treasure as well. So not just dig spots. So if you, so if he's in a general area, if there's a treasure chest or a unique uh, treasure, he'll try to point you towards it if he can reach it. If he can't reach it, I think he he won't bark to it as far as I remember. But yeah, the the dog companion makes treasure hunting a lot easier, unlike the previous game. Not that I didn't mind doing that in the previous game. Oh, uh, whoop, more dudes. Oh, let's run back a bit. So I don't hit. Could, uh, since we don't have magic, I can't do anything with that. I could uh, attack him with my sword. I will be doing that just to kind of even out my hero. I'm going to try... Uh, I think I'm uh, trying to what I do. I think in the last game I basically just maxed out every stat for everyone, but in this one, I'll I won't do ev I won't max out every single stat. And there's a reason for that, but I'll talk about that later, uh, like later in the game. Right now I'm gonna go for like an agility based, like a skill based character with some magic, until like end game stuff where it's just like well I have no other choice. So. Switch to go any further. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, in the, in the game there's going to be like certain switches or treasure or marks like these that you have to hit and you have to, uh, 
hit them with a specific corresponding attack. So that's yellow, so I had to hit it with a uh, with my uh, uh, archery. So or whatever your archer ability is at the time, because the crossbow is not the only thing. I think you can get um, you can get regular bows, and I think you can get a and like in the beginning of the game, you were able to get a uh, uh, what's that? Another discolored. Eh, that's probably just my imagination. And a door we can't enter. Oh, or we can. <laughs> it looked like it was going to be locked or something like that. I was like, well, there you go. I already found it, dude. Oh, money bag. Oh, I should have read the description. That was, I mean, it's going to tell you it's money, but... All right, well, we'll use that to buy something whenever we get out of here, so... Um... Yeah, there'd be some of these switches around that might require you to hit it with either your um, skill or strength or uh, strength skill or magic. Spo spoilers, we're going to get magic in this game at some point. Hmm, what's this? It just looks like a truss that's been overgrown with the green. Tre uh, dryads or treants have been hoarding it. Ooh, rusty mace. Wait, what did it say? Better than your rusty longsword. Well, that's for me to decide, game. No. As crude and ugly as it is effective, one can imagine this mace being wielded by the very first men to walk upon the world. And if you want to automatically use it, press the square button, and it'll automatically equip it. So now we have a heavy weapon now if we want to. So, yeah, we can... Not that we couldn't kill these beetles with the... Um, with... With the sword, but hey, more damage, right? Um, and I think the mace, uh, uh, well, the being a heavy weapon is slower, so it'll do more damage. We have to kind of, you know, kind of figure out, like, well, how do I want to attack certain creatures and things? Unless you use skill or magic, then it doesn't matter. No. <laughs> um, I think if I remember correctly, this game is a little more difficult than the previous one. Uh, but not really by much. If I recall. It's, I'll admit, it's been a long time since I played the sequel uh, to this game, you know. It's been forever since I played the first one and when I played it too, so. The reason I don't, like, I, you know, I could have easily have, uh, oh yeah, if you, uh, beat the creatures fast enough, I, and as well as take no, like, little to no damage, you can get bonuses to how much experience you get. I think it's also, uh, it, it's the, it's like in the previous game, kind of like the multiplier or whatever, you know, where you can keep it up or keep going with it, you can, uh, yeah, the game is basically saying, hey, you don't have to follow the, uh, the trail. There'll be, there'll possibly be treasures you'll miss if you do that. Even though the game put in the mechanic for, you know, searching for treasure, but whatever. But I get it. It's, it's there for people who want to just do the story or whatever. Uh, oh, on the skeleton, on this dead body, we find Brendan's diary. This appears to be a page from Explorer's Diary, recording the details of an expedition to this cave. The day. My hand is shaking from exhaustion, but I must remain vigilant. I almost died it off last night as we camped around the fire, but still managed to keep an eye on Eric and Drake. I have seen the, the greedy glimmer in the eyes. They mean to make the treasure theirs. Perhaps it's time to make use of the poison. Brendan. So, you, sounds like he probably poisoned his companions, huh? That's what greed gets you, dude. Get you, get you shame and hate and sadness. Ooh How do you get over there, though? Or up there, I think. Because there's a uh, cliffside. There's probably something over there. Oh, another dead body. Probably the other companions. Eric. This un unposted letter was written by a member of an expedition of treasure hunters. Dearest Harriet, our voyage into the trails of the Bower Lake has taken a turn for the worse. I only hope I survive to see daylight again. You were right about Brendan and Drake. They are selfish brutes, conspiring behind my back, plotting my murder so that they can keep the treasure to themselves. But fear not, my love. If I plan to poison the water supplies while they sleep, soon we shall be rich. Feverishly yours, Eric. Looks well, like they all poison themselves, I assume. And where's the uh, where's Drake though? Drake and the Nine Nine Dragons? Oh Lord, no, 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 no. Well, unless you want a really good laugh, then yeah, sure. But actually, I don't even have the game. I should have bought it when I was at a when I worked at GameStop years and years ago when it was like a like less than a dollar just to have as like a a game I could dick around with, uh, like, on a playthrough, but, eh, whatever. I mean, plenty of people have done better or more humorous playthroughs on that game anyway, so just watch those, really. Is this the famous Drake? Yep, Drake's suicide note. Oh, well, he chose to take his own way out, I guess. 
On this tattered piece of paper are the last words of one Francis Drake. I mean, Drake Morton, explorer and treasure hunter. A man can only be pushed so far before he breaks. Five nights without sleep while those villains scheme behind my back, losing a foot to a giant beetle. That never-ending attack of hiccups. Well, it was all worth it. For I found it! Yes, the treasure's mine! Who knows what a great hero made use of this magical gem. All I know is that neither Brendan nor Eric will ever get their heads in it. I am planning to poison them both tonight. Then I am throwing the gem into the lake and poisoning myself, just in case. Nobody makes a fool out of Drake Morton! Did, but you killed yourself and didn't even get the treasure. And the, he threw the gem into the lake? Hmm. How are we going to get that? If we can, anyway. Anyway, jump down here. Come on, dog. You'll follow us eventually. You're here to, to the end of the game. You know what they say about animal companions. I never... Uh, yeah, you did say something about throwing in the lake, but we couldn't do anything about that. Hmm. Something to remember in the future. Remember that for later. <laughs> if I don't forget it, yeesh. I, well, I, I tend to... Yeah, this is the game, this is when the game per uh, specifically says use your range. Archery, when they're flying and all that, because it's already Those green them. orbs hold the knowledge and experience of the creatures yeah, that yeah, you Yeah, yeah, you're repeating yourself, Teresa. You're pretty old, though, so I, I guess I can't fault you for... Fault your, fault your stars for that, but so. Is there anything else in here? No? No dog? You don't see anything? No treasures? Okay. Well, let's keep going. Okay, I thought I saw something. Hmm. Alright, good boy. Come on. Whoop. More creatures. I guess I should every once in a while use this face. I'm trying not to get myself hit, so. Like in the previous, uh,. Although it's not like I'm ever going to put the character on, like, without any clothes on. But, you know, like in the previous game, if you, uh... Oops. Ah! Whoa. Ah, well, I mean, I'm not trying to never get hit, you know what I mean? But, like in the previous game, if you, if you, um... If you take damage too much, you'll start forming scars and stuff like that, which really only could only see them on your face as well as... You can only really see them on the body if you decide to do, like, a, like... You know, like, like, no clothes or, like, a boxer run of the game or whatever you want to call it. Or if you just wanted to do no weapon. Although, how fun would that be? That would probably get boring after a while. Doing, like, a no weapon run and just punching people to death. Try to do one punch, man, I guess. One punch! Anyway. I was kind of disappointed with the... Well, I still like the second season, but I was disappointed with the art style of the, of the second season of One Punch Man. Just because you can tell it wasn't, they had to, it took forever and they had to like cut back on a lot of like the production value on it. So, hmm. can't get through that door, so, you know, gotta take the shot. Oh, what, are you switching on me, game? Hmm. Yep, this is, this is the game talking about how certain switches in certain areas will have a different um, requirements. Oh, I guess I could have. I gotta remember to pay attention when it asks me to, for cinematic time, you know, which is when the game wants us to move the camera or do, choose the camera option to make it look all cinematic light. -like. Well, the light tells us to go this way, but let's go this way. Hmm, maybe an old library or something like that? There are books around here. Or more beetles. Wouldn't be surprised. Come, companion. Come, dog. Oh, oh. Ah! Poopers! I mean, two more giant deals. Yeah. Every time that green glow like that makes me think of, I have the power! Yes, I, I see a dog get, get out of the way. I can't hit you, right, dog? Okay. Hey, just because I'm a little snarky or a little, little mean to humans, I'm not going to be mean to the dog. As far as I know, there isn't, like, a uh, attack the dog option. You can, uh, ooh. A jet. Jet! Ah! Oh wait, no, that's different. Um, jets do! Woo. Anyway. Less a gem than a chunk of decayed and fossilized wood. You could probably find equally stylish examples from the wreck of a burned down house. Hmm, how nice. Anyway, it's a gem. You can sell it. Uh, I think you can also put it into weapons, depending on the gem. Not that gem, obviously. That one's a selling gem, but they're like power gems and stuff like that. You can get that uh, affect weapons. Um, but we don't. I don't think we have anything right now that can do that. Oh, we got some books. The Tattered Spire. 
This rare book has the, has the stain of time upon its pages. It tells of the fall of the old kingdom and what many scholars believe was the catalyst of its destruction, the tattered spire. It is said that the construction of the spire was ordered by the last archon and that it was to be con a conduit for all the will in the world. I think the tattered spire, isn't that mentioned in the first game? Like, wasn't that part of the DLC? No. Actually, I, maybe we went to it. Now, nah, it's been like, what, three years since I played Fable 1? Forgive me. The power it would command would be so great, reality itself might be shaped by anyone who used it. On the day of its completion, the Archon entered the spire and the kingdom's subjects awaited what would be his final wish. Whatever that wish was, the outcome was a wave of energy so vast it lay wasting the entire kingdom. Was this truly the Archon's wish to erase a corrupt world so that the fresh one might rise in its place? I don't know. Oh, another one. The Hero of Oakvale. Oh, I wonder who this is referring to. This is one of the many books written about the hero of Oakvale who defeated the dreaded Jack of Blades. Ah, it's the hero of the first game. Though there are many conflicting reports regarding the hero's life and his feats, because you can either be good or evil, all accounts agree they wielded the legendary Sword of Aeons against Jack and slew him twice, once in Jack's human state and again in the form of a dragon. Uh, one is the main storyline, two is when you do the uh, um, DLC or whatever. Uh, oh, yeah. Among his many other accomplishments are his victory at the Witchwood Arena, where he fought a uh, Whisper, which... <sighs> that was so disappointing that she didn't become either a companion, a love interest, or rival throughout the whole game. Well, that's what you get when you don't weren't able to like really get to do everything you wanted in your first project, you know. The slaying of the White Balvary and the freeing of the Prophets of the Fireheart. Though any official records of his possible offspring would have been destroyed in the civilian attacks on the Heroes Guild, it is believed that his bloodline continued and that one day a new hero would merge to save Albion at its time of need. I wonder when this the hero will come. I don't know, man. Maybe they'll help us with Lucian if we can find them. If they exist. Oh, another uh, green cover chest. What's inside? Hopefully something good. Maybe a cheeseburger. No cheeseburger, but we got money. Money bag. It's hard, it's shiny, it makes life easier. It's gold! Spin it, hoard it, or give it away. Just don't put it in your mouth. You never know where it's been. <laughs> uh, I love the the writing in this game. It's so cheeky. You can tell the British. Oh, another book. The end is almost nigh. That sounds like a nihilist book. This is the collection of predictions and doom mongering from the mystic and soothsayer Arthur Dandelion. Dandelion? Wasn't he in the first game, I think? Or are you talking about Witcher Dandelion? <laughs> His more cryptic visions, such as the one about two brothers of little wit and shall release howling death upon a town of blood, have invited speculation and much shrugging of shoulders. Among his other prophecies is the one that foresees the invention of a machine that will aid in the cleaning of soiled garments. Hmm. His most famous warning is the one that predicts the end of the world. According to Dandelion, it will not, be, it'll not come suddenly, but the ground shall shake, and the past shall erupt in the present in a most bloody manner. Though perhaps a strange being shall transform into a dragon and lay waste to all that is long time before that happens. What do I know? There, this is exactly a science. Eh, you know what they say, chemistry is an exact science. No. <laughs> um, wait a minute. Alright. Let's go back now. Follow the path. We've strayed too far. Oh, we read a few books and everything, so learn a little lore. Maybe you can tell this game takes place many years after the first game, if any. I forgot how many years, actually, how many years Beyond they say. Beyond these but... broken doors lies the Heroes Guild. The Heroes Guild, huh? Must have been quite a long time ago because the fact that the Heroes For Guild is now For centuries, this academy trained the most supremely gifted sons and daughters of Albion, bound together by the blood that flowed in their veins. Once worshipped by the people of Albion, the great heroes came to be feared and hated. No man alive today remembers the night the Guild burned. And now... It lies forgotten, but the heroes are not all gone. You are here, and that same heroic blood flows through you. Look around at these walls. Your forebear, one of the mightiest heroes who ever lived. At a young age, he suffered a devastating loss, from which he never truly recovered. But when the world tried to crush him, he fought back. He grew strong. Strong enough to reshape the world as he saw fit. You must do the same. The guild has reacted to you. Step into the light. Learn the true power of heroes. 
And yeah, the Lucius did say we did have the blood of heroes before he tried to murder us. You know, so I guess we are a hero in some weird fashion. Not now, dog. I can't play ball. I'm here to become a hero. Get some powers. Yo. Your blood is awakening. That reminds me of Highlander. Nice scream there, lady. So, you can now ooh, channel the experience you have collected into strength, skill, or will. Strength improves combat with hand-to-hand -hand weapons. Skill allows you to shoot faster and with greater accuracy. Will gives you control over the forces of magic. You're a wizard, Harry. Before you is a color's gate. It reacts to the will of one who seeks to use it. You have not been able to use will yet, but the simple act of reaching this place has given you will experience. You need to learn a will ability to activate the color's gate. Are you saying you gave me enough experience to level up? Thanks, Gabe. Or level up in will now ability? Yeah, we have to. Have we are required so to buy. To better yourself in strength, skill, and will. Yeah, we are required to learn a uh, uh, skill your as. And blasts them with lightning. Inferno calls forth magical flames to scorch and burn your foes. I forgot the game expires. The game basically gives you enough will, because it has to give you will, which you can't spend. Uh, you Like in the previous game, you can't spend, like, blue, like, you can't uh, spend blue skill, uh, uh, points on, like, a will ability. You can only spend that on, on strength stuff. The green one is the only one you can spend on anything, really. So, but yeah, the game gives you just enough. So the game almost expects you to buy Inferno first, because it gives you 350 Unless you have a little bit of extra experience or if you want to spend it all, for example. So, uh, let's just go over a quick description of them really quick. Uh, Tree's already talked about it. And blasts them with light. You already talked to it. You already told me about that. Yeah, basically it's the, well, I don't know if I'd say Sith Lightning, but, you know, it's a... Because you can either, bla like in the previous game, you can either blast it out like regular. You can point your hand in shock or you could charge it up and shoot pillars of magic inferno it's basically a fireball inferno you know, a little fireball in front of you or do a area of attack spell foes. if you charge it time control like the previous game you can slow down time, time so that's more effective if you were playing more of a fighter wizard you, class than, than straight speed. wizard obviously you can learn all the spells and play however you want so it's not like you're restricted by a class or anything like that so which is nice but yeah you can slow down time and then the higher the level the more how longer you can do that. Blades, uh, blades you summon blades to, to defend. Your I think they just surround you, don't they? Oh no, I guess they surround an, an attack, so. Uh, and then I think you get more blades per level, so. Vortex summons wind. Vortex creates a powerful windstorm right that will pummel your enemies with nearby debris or even other enemies. Yeah. Debris? I thought it was debris. Well, she is British, so clearly saying it wrong. No. Um. <laughs> Chaos, that confuses people, if I remember correctly. Chaos confuses yeah, your they foes, sometimes making attack them their unpredictable. Enemies. They may flee, attack their fellows, or even fall in love with Force you. Force push, Jedi, basically. Force push sends a blast of energy towards your enemies, hurling them into nearby objects. It is very effective in confined spaces. Yeah, that's not a bad ability. A raised dead? Well, you can raised raise dead shadows causes or... the bones of the recently deceased to rise and fight for you. It's not a bad ability either. Get, always getting more allies is always important, but uh, I'm going to go with uh, um, Inferno for now. I'm always a fan of a fire, either Inferno, Inferno or Shock, but I'm going to go with what the game magical flames gives me the ability for. So foot. let's. Uh, you've learned the Inferno spell. Send forth a ball of trailing flames at the enemy, or scorch all those around you by summoning a ring, ring, ring of fire. And then if we want to level up to level 2, we need 2100. Experience, so yeah, we're not gonna be doing that anytime soon, or at least not for a while. If we want to level that one up, so all right, let's look at the Dexter Dexter, Dexter skills. Styles. So level unlock special moves for skill. ranged weapons and other abilities crucial to a skilled fighter. So basically, this one allows you to even tells you how to do it. So basically, the first level gives you the ability to roll during combat, so you can move around. So if you're playing a ranged build or want to play like that, it allows you to move around more effectively. Um, the higher levels will give you different abilities and stuff. Whoops. Um, accuracy basically means you do more damage with your guns the and crossbows. So the more damage if you're doing you pure range build, that's the way to go for a lot of it. Um, 
Let's see, six. Yeah, I don't have enough enough to spend on that, unfortunately. Um, and then speed. That, that's more for your melee bit. So basically, you speed. just attack faster. faster you will be able and, to oh, and you also you can reload your. I guess I should let Teresa talk, but but yeah, and you can also reload quicker uh, your re ranged weaponry too. So that's also be a good one to learn. Then we get the strength abilities. Like in the previous game, basically. Um, how much, how, how much life you have, how much, you, how combat. tough you are, and uh, yeah. See, I think physique, yeah, physique is for pure damage. The stronger and like physique, in the previous game, the more damage you will cause the, uh, with close combat weapons. Yeah, like in the previous game, the the your physique will show how muscular you are. So, like the more physique you get, the bigger you actually get in the game. And this is why, this is one of the few problems with, well, I don't, it's not a problem per se, but it's one of the things with choosing the male or female hero and that basically both level up the same way is that the female character, if you level up maximum physique, she looks like a tank. <laughs> uh, like, like they don't, like, because the female body, it, it, like, despite, like, you know, like, you know, if you talk to bodybuilders and stuff like that, it's still, like, you can bulk up. But it's we women bulk up different from men. But in this game, choose the physique. You bulk up the same way. It's almost kind of hilarious, like how the the female hero bulks up, you know. So, <laughs> so for those who like to keep their female character like more realistic, usually you want to just boof, bo boost up your physique like once or twice, you know. But I mean, you can play however. It doesn't really matter. It's just funny to me. That's that's how I feel about that. But yeah, brutal styles is just brutal defending and, and being able to block for use in close attacks. Combat. Physique is damage, and you bulk up every time you do that. The and toughness your physique, is you the your resilience damage you for damage, so you get more HP for that. So that doesn't show. Basically, really the only stat that really shows up obviously is physique. The stronger your physique, um, where you just get bulkier, the more bulkier. damage you will cause. And there is a ca character weapons. later in the game that kind of almost shows off what a max physique looks, um, but it'll be a while till we get that. But do I want to? Well, you can level up at any time, actually, so I don't need to actually do that stuff now, so... Excellent. Can you feel the power coursing through you? It is only the beginning. Use your will ability to then. hit the flit switch and power up the gate. Once activated, so, it will allow you to travel back to Bower Lake. Yeah, B is your, is your magic ability, so fire! Well done. Now you are ready to begin your journey. Use the Colors Gate. All right, before we go, for those of you who have bought the game straight up with no special editions or whatever, I think there's still something here, but I don't remember. But I have the... I bought this game long, long ago for the like the special edition or whatever. That was when I used to actually buy special editions of games. So this treasure chest has something that you may not have. I don't, I don't even know if this is on the PC version of the game, and it, it might be. Um, but I get a few... Uh, I'll, I might show them off, or I'll, I'll try to play as if... I might just show it off, but uh, yeah, because I have like either the special edition or I download some stuff online, I forgot, but I get a little few extra abilities or items in the game. I get the, oh no, I guess it is the legendary uh, edition content or whatever it's called. You get the Hal Sword. I wonder what the Hal Sword is. Hmm. Like a guy with green armor and stuff? LCE content. Long ago, when Albion was still under rule of the Old Kingdom, a rift in space opened a portal between dimensions. Through the rift stepped a warrior of immense power, clad in green armor and carrying a striking crystal sword. Though he never revealed his name, he was known to all as Hal, made out of a strange material resembling glass. This sword once emitted a powerful energy when wielded, uh, when wielded by Hal. Hmm. I'll just w w show it just to look at it. Hal's helmet? Uh, I think it's the same thing as before. It's just uh, the difference is that the bottom piece. Thanks to his helmet, no one ever saw his face. And by the time his body was found over a thousand years later, only dust remained inside. Well, I guess he never got to leave. Yeah, the description is the same until like the final little bit at the very bottom. Uh, his body armor protected him from the claws of Banshee just seconds after arriving in our world. Let's see? And we got his pants. <laughs> I took his pants. Uh, oh, these were his armored trousers. <laughs> uh, his boots. Uh, these were the boots he wore. Yes, thank you for that description. Name. Hal's gloves. Uh, these gauntlets protected his hands from the searing energy that emanated from his sword. <laughs> the chicken soup headpiece. Uh, to become a chicken, one must think like a chicken and wear a chicken head. Thanks, game. 
Uh, chicken suit? Yep. It's little known fact that the chicken costume is actually based on Meredith's, so uh, Meredith Sock's horror novel, Megafowl, in which a giant chicken terrorizes Albion. And the feet. Why allow yourself to be taken seriously when you can wear these ridiculous novelty shoes? They're big, squishy, and comfortable. Almost too comfortable. The counterfeit warrior? Uh, this is an expression manual. It is always necessary to smash someone's face in order to get your point across. Sometimes you can just pretend to smash their face. Use to learn the feign attack expression. Thank you. The hero doll. This is, uh, I think this is, you might get this from the collector's edition as well, I'm not sure. I thought you got this for having a fable save, but no way that's because it's Xbox original. Never mind. I guess just having it. But yeah, remember the previous game where you could collect dolls of all the heroes and stuff like that? Well, that's the Hero of Albion's doll with the uh, Union Jack on his, on his britches there. Right, awesome. Oh, I forgot to read it. Dang it. Apocalyptic pink hair dye. It is said the warriors of the savage plains that lie in the uncharted lands beyond S Samarkand, 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 consider this color to be the most ferocious. Lionhead face tattoo, obviously. Lionhead Studios is the one who made this game. This was the logo of the company founded by the great alchemist Leo Head, inventor of <laughs> extraordinary potions, the first alchemist of Castle Fairfax. The magical properties of the ink he created mean the tattoo will apply itself automatically whenever you use it, without the need to visit a tattooist. The body tattoo, same thing. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, yep, don't same description on that one. And yeah, and obviously all those saves after grabbing all that other stuff. And yeah, Hal Sword has augmented swaps. We're technically not supposed to have the yep. If it hasn't if it isn't obvious to you viewers yet, I look like Master Chief from Halo series. Yep, this is a tie in for because I think both studios were not owned, but uh, first party studios from Microsoft, so they would do little projects like this, like you know, crossover stuff like in this one they allowed you to wear Master Chief's armor if you had the clutch edition. Obviously you don't need it to to beat or play the game or anything like that, so don't don't be like if you don't have it, don't worry Use about it. Use your newfound so. abilities to defeat them. And then it's just like, hey, use your usual world magic against these creatures. Yeah, if you hold down the button, you will uh, um, cause a charge effect. Make your way to Bowerstone. I will meet you there. And depending on how long, on how long you hold the, the charge, I don't. I only have level one, so I thought I heard someone was talking. Uh, I only have level one, but I guess it can go up to like level five or whatever, and then the range is bigger and so forth and so on. So that's cool. So it looks like we've we've earned the power of the hero, which means we can level up our skills to become as strong as anyone else. Which means our first step to uh, destroy Lucian is on the way, but we must make our way to Bowerstone. Will we make it there with great ease, or will something block our path and force us to become a hero that we should be? Find out next time in the next episode of Fable 2. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.